Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Iris. I am a rising senior at MIT studying biological engineering and pre-med student. I am here today with Dr. Sophia Yen, who is the CEO and co-founder of Pandia Health. Here on Pandia Health's Facebook every Tuesday, we usually answer trendy questions that are uh, people are asking Google. And today we're going to be talking about unprotected sex and the kinds of questions that people are asking Google on that. Uh, when I when I looked these questions up, all a lot of them happened to be around uh, penis and vagina sex. So that just is what came up. Um, this is the kind of sex that can get you pregnant. Um, so yes, if you guys don't know what Pandia Health is, we're a birth control delivery company, um, which does free delivery and automatic refills straight to your door, uh, discreet packaging, very cute stickers and uh, high chews that come with it. Um, and we also, if you do not have an active birth control prescription, our doctor or expert doctors uh, can write you prescriptions in the state of Florida, California, Texas, Arizona, and Wyoming. Um, so make sure to check us out. And if you do sign up for any of our services, use the code TRENDING. Uh, awesome. So Dr. Yen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank um, you for having me. Yeah. Um, so the first question that people are asking Google is, how does a condom break? So the important factors about condoms breaking one I forgot to do on the other one is it's not because it's too small if you take a condom you can actually put it on a watermelon and so mm. I don't think anybody's penis is as big as a watermelon and if it is you better go see the doctor and do something <laughs> about that because that's not normal it might be elephantitis but um, not the size of a watermelon so it, it may feel a little tight and constrictive but it's not because the condom is too small um, the number one factor is often how was the condom stored? Was it, is it expired? Definitely need to check that. But more likely, was it stored in a hot place? So mm -hmm. was it in your wallet? Was it in your glove compartment, in your car? Was it in um, any other kind of hot thing? 75 degrees Fahrenheit is normal room temperature. And mm -hmm. 90 degrees would be way too high. 80 degrees would probably be okay but anything you know, much more than that. And given recent climate change and just temperature in general and heat wave and whatnot, and in California, we're having some heat wave and fires, then um, these are all risk factors for condoms. So definitely um, storage in too hot of a place. And then another issue is lubrication. So if the woman or the one with the vagina is not into it and the vagina is not wet, then you will have friction. And the more friction there is, the more likelihood that the condom could break. Um, ooh, another thing I forgot, but should hopefully have been taught in your basic condom class is that when you put on the condom, you wanna leave a little space for the sperm to go into. And so some of these already have a reservoir tip which has that space, or you can just leave that space at the end. You don't want it up like a little bubble, but you just want it um, thing. So that way when it pop, when the sperm comes out, it fills up that space and it doesn't just like blow and then pop. So that definitely um, could be another factor as well. And then with the lubricant, make sure you don't use anything that's oil based. So you're like, oh, I'll use some lotion or some literally oil or Vaseline, right? That sounds good, lubricant, it's, you know, wet or, you know, that's how you like make a door uncreak or something like that. Um, yeah. But the oil actually eats through the latex of the condom and breaks down the condom so that the condom won't work. Hmm. Okay, good to know. <laughs> I didn't know people were using Vaseline, that's interesting. Um, yeah, and also the, the how large a condom can go up to, I think actually my cousins used to blow them up as balloons. So it is, they, from anecdotal experience, I've seen them blown up as balloons. Um, I have a, a friend acquaintance that I met. He is a super skier and jumps off mountains and skis down. And for some reason he, in his youth or currently, um, has been dared to put a condom over his head and then blow it up. And so it's like this big Devo hat, you know? And so again, no penis should be bigger than, should be that big. So if it can fit on top of a grown man's head, it should totally fit your penis. <laughs> awesome. So there's a few ways it could break. Um, 
So if it does break, which is what uh, we've been calling unprotected sex, um, the next question is, can you take this, uh, the emergency contraception before, I guess? So uh, no doctor would recommend it. No, the FDA wouldn't recommend it, but I believe there's research going out there or there's research that has been published in very small numbers and maybe therefore they're trying to replicate it but they've shown that you probably could take it like five hours ahead or a couple hours ahead. Um, the way that emergency contraception works is one, it, if your egg's about to pop out, it's like, stop, I'm pregnant. The high progesterone level tells your body it's pregnant and it's like, don't pop out an egg. And ooh, okay, so maybe it'll stop that for ha from happening for three to five days. That's kind of the main mechanism it works. The other mechanism it could work is um, in your uterus at the bottom, there's a cervix, right? Where um, you would do a pap smear where a baby would come out and there's mucus there. And it theoretically could cause that mucus to be like hard to get through so the sperm mm -hmm. can't get through. And then it's also thought that maybe it stops the sperm from getting where it needs to go. Like the sperm's trying to run and it can't penetrate the egg or just like slows down the motility or does something to it. Um, if you take it too early, then that's not going to work. It might mm -hmm. be, it might not have that effect and it may only rely on the blocking the egg from coming out effect. Um, so it won't necessarily, it wasn't ever tested for yeah. that. And so um, I say if there's any chance that you, if you don't want to be pregnant and you don't want to deal with an abortion or unplanned pregnancy, better do plan A rather than plan B. Better to use a regular everyday cover you birth control, such as the birth control pill, patch ring, IUD implant, et cetera, than plan B. And that is exactly why they named it plan B because it's supposed to be plan B and not plan A. And so you tried A, you failed A, let's throw on some plan B. Not, oh, we have access to A, but I'm not gonna do A, I'm gonna go with this. And the other thing is that, you know, the plan A, the tier A birth control is like 99.9999% effective, whereas plan B is 75 to 95% effective, depending where you are in your cycle. And even then, if your egg popped out, it may not work at all. Yeah. Uh, we also did a Q&A actually on all things having to do with emergency contraceptives. So make sure to check that one out. We answer the differences between like copper IUD, which I recently, or I found out actually not that long ago was an emergency contraceptive and Ella and Plan B comparing how those work uh, because they have different purposes and benefits to them. Yes, um, we also have two YouTube videos on it as well. Yes. Uh, and so the next question is kind of related is it's, can you take, or can you have unprotected sex after taking plan B? So again, the main mechanism of plan B or emergency contraceptive pills is blocking the egg from coming out. And I, I think that Ella has been shown to work for five days of doing that, but also know that sperm can live for five days. I just realized that in thinking this through, that um, even though the egg will be stopped for five days, if you have, if you took the Ella now, and then you had sex a day later, actually, let's go this way, took the Ella now, and then had sex a day later, this goes for five days, but this goes five days out, and so you might have one day out where you're not covered, does that make sense? So sperm theoretically can live up to five days out. And if Ella or plan B are working by stopping the egg for five days, but then you have sex one or two days later, cause you're like, oh, I took plan B, it covers me for five days, but it doesn't cover you for the extra five days that that sperm can live. So after five days, the egg comes out and the sperm's still there because the sperm can live for five days, up to five days. So I, I wouldn't recommend um, having sex after you take plan B, if you truly don't want to be pregnant, theoretically, you should retake plan B or it's generics um, if you need to. So it looks like Iris either cut out or her internet um, died on her. So I will continue to answer the questions till she comes back, if she comes back. Um, haha, solo, what a way to go. 
maybe she'll come back. Um, the other questions that uh, we had discussed talking about was, um, how soon should I take a pregnancy test after unprotected sex? So uh, the research shows that theoretically 11 days after you have Yay, you're back. Hello. <laughs> I was just winging it and I was just answering theoretically 11 days after uh, conception, you should be able to have a positive urine pregnancy test. But to oh. be absolutely certain, 14 days um, after would be best. And generally, if you missed your period that you were expecting, then then would be a good time to test it or 14 days after your sex act to be absolutely certain. Mm -hmm. And I tell people that if there's any chance you could be pregnant, then act like you're pregnant. Meaning if you would continue the pregnancy, don't drink, don't smoke, don't party, don't do drugs or, or alcohol or anything like that. If you're gonna terminate the pregnancy, do whatever you want. But if you're not gonna terminate the pregnancy, then make sure that you are growing a beautiful, happy embryo to its maximum potential. Uh, I, I thought your answer to when I asked when you're ovulating was really interesting. So can you tell us um, how do we know when it's when the egg is popping out, I guess? Yes. So in general, um, the rule of thumb is 14 days after the first day of your period is usually when your egg should come out. However, this day can be pushed uh, way further away from day 14 if you're stressed out or if you don't have enough nutrition. So I'm a stress puppy and if there's like finals coming and then I can push that, not on purpose, but it just does from day 14 to day 17 or maybe even to day 21, mm. depending how stressed I am. Cause your body's like, ah, she's freaking out. She's probably running from a tiger or some other animal. So she doesn't have time to have a baby right now. Don't drop an egg. If she's gonna run away from a tiger and the tiger's just gonna eat her anyway. She needs the energy to run from the tiger rather than growing a baby. Um, yeah. Same thing with nutrition. If you don't have enough nutrition to feed you, you don't have enough nutrition to grow a baby. So the body's like, she can't even feed herself. So let's not just do a baby right now. Let's wait until she has enough nutrition. The other way that I had never learned in medical school, and maybe they're teaching it better now, but even then there's just so much to learn in medical school, I don't think they cover it unless you're going into the specialty of fertility or something. But in trying to get pregnant, there is a book called Managing Your Fertility, and it talks about your cervical mucus and it educates you. So your cervical mucus, excuse me, I think there's like smoke, I'm just gonna. I'm in NorCal and there are fires oh, no. and stuff. So usually the air is good, but maybe, I don't know. Um, maybe the AC is dusty, who knows? Anyway, so um, usually on after you have your period, right? Then um, your uterus, aha, <laughs> your uh, uterus is closed up down here and it doesn't want anything to get in. So if you wipe yourself, just like when you're going pee from your vagina, not from your butt, obviously, then you can check and look and look at the quality of the mucus. So it should be pretty dry. But then when the egg pops out here, boop, oh, sorry, the right one, boop, and it's coming out, then of course this opens up because it's like, come, let's make a baby, let the sperms go up. And so if you look at this mucus, you could either one, I actually once saw the mucus plug. It was like, bleh, bleh, and then I was like, okay, it's open. I'm open for baby, you know? <laughs> And then um, the other one is the mucus then becomes the consistency of egg white. So mm. it's clear, it's stretchy, and it's not a cooked egg white, it's a raw egg white. That is yeah. a good question, raw egg white. And so it's stretchy and then it actually facilitates the sperm to go <laughs> into the uterus. And so that is another way to know when ovulation is. And then the third way is pretty standard. If you're trying to get pregnant, you um, pee on a strip and they're actually not that expensive because it's not like individual pregnancy tests, but it's like a, a bottle of 50 for 30 bucks or I think it's like, you know, 25 bucks, 50 cents a strip. And you okay. can pee on it every eight hours or 12 hours, however frequently you want to check. And then you have an LH surge, so it'll be positive. And then 12 to 24 hours after that, your egg will pop out. So when you hmm. see that, you're like, all right, we got to get it on in 12 to 24 hours and hmm. just keep going for the next couple of days if you want to get right on it. So yeah. that's if you're trying to get pregnant and yeah. if you're trying to track um, ovulation. You can't use this to prevent pregnancy 
because sperm, as we mentioned, lives for three to five days. So if you get that positive, you're like, oh, crap, I shouldn't have had sex three to five days ago. Yeah. So that's important to know. Um, well, but as you mentioned, when you're talking about uh, our bodies, you know, they're amazing. If you're really stressed, it's not going to pop out the egg. Um, hopefully. But, it hopefully. could just to be mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there's multiple ways to know if you're ovulating. And usually it's like more interesting if you're trying to get pregnant because then you know when to have sex. It's kind of not useful once you've already <laughs> you, you've already had unprotected sex, then it's kind of sad. Um, yeah. Then you're like, oh, crap, am I in the window? <sighs> and then the you most, run. Yeah. The important part is that I tell people 14 days after the first day of your period is not the day to have unprotected sex. That is the day to not have sex if you don't want to get pregnant or the day to make sure you use condoms plus something, or condoms plus spermicide, condoms plus hormonal, or condoms plus copper IUD, that's the day to be really protected. And yeah. unfortunately, I have a lot of patients that come in exactly at ovulation. I was like, did nobody tell you? 14 days is not the day to have sex. But I don't blame them, because when you ovulate, your body, the one with the uterus, emits pheromones and says, hey, come do me, I'm pregnable. And then the other opposite gender to make a baby comes, uh, yeah, you know, and so it's, it's your hormones that's driving yeah. it. So I don't blame you, but really we got to work mind over matter or <laughs> use good birth control. Yeah. Amazing how uh, evolution has brought us here. Um, we haven't evolved beyond our animal instinct of pheromones yeah. and sex and attraction. Yeah. Now we just have birth control. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So if you can, and you don't want to get pregnant, uh, make sure to check out Pandia Health. <laughs> um, cool. So next question is kind of related. How long after unprotected sex does implantation occur? Yes. So again, comes the uterus, the cuterus, as I call it. Oh, it depends four to one to four days, I believe, because I think it depends where the egg is. If that, well, it certainly depends where the egg is. Wrong side. Okay, here. If the egg is here in the ovary and it just popped out and it met the sperm, they have to travel. Oh, I gotta do this. Travel into the uterus, not in the fallopian tube. You could have it go in the fallopian tube, and that's called an ectopic pregnancy, and that's mm. not good. <laughs> yeah. You want it to be in here because if it if you get pregnant here, we cannot save it. And yeah. it might pop and then the woman might die and bleed out. Yeah. So, um, but it could be one to three to four days. Three to four days is what I hear is average to get into here and then to stick. Okay, cool. I love the cuterus. <laughs> um, and then the last question that we have is about uh, a method called withdrawal or some people call it pulling out. Um, so how effective is that when you're dealing with unprotected sex? Yes. So the withdrawal method, theoretically, according to the textbook, works as well as the condom. So the condom will prevent pregnancy. Um, well, people will get pregnant on the condom. Wait, 20 out of 100 people on the condom will get pregnant and or 21. And then 20 um, people out of 100 using the withdrawal method will get pregnant. But another way to look at it is one out of five. Yeah. And so the dangerous part I think people need to know is as soon as the penis is erect, there's some fluid up there called the pre-ejaculate. And research has shown that there is, I think, five to 200 million per mm. milliliter of sperm, five to 200 million sperm per milliliter of liquid that is here. And so mm. how many sperm do you need to get pregnant? one though probably around 10,000 but <laughs> 5 million to 200 million is far greater than 10,000 and far greater than one so as soon as the penis is erect if you stick it in and then you and then you pull it out you just introduced at least 5 to 200 million and they've checked the sperm of all these men who had erections and 70% of them had sperm 30% did not in the pre ejaculate and so the question is, you don't know if you're the 30% that doesn't or you're the 70% that does. And if you're playing odds, odds are that you are a part of the 70% rather than the 30%. And all of this doesn't protect you against sexually transmitted infections. Yes. So if there's, if both of you were not virgins and neither of you 
were not sexually assaulted or whatever you get the idea, then there's a risk of sexually transmitted infection. So always assume everybody has every disease under the sun and use a condom because that's the only method to prevent sexually transmitted infections aside from abstinence and masturbation. Yes. Um, awesome. So uh, we have actually an article talking about how uh, mixing two methods of birth control, which is what's recommended or what Dr. Dr. Yana has been recommending um, to prevent the most, you know, the most effective way of preventing pregnancies to use two methods. Um, not yeah. two hormonal methods, but condoms plus something, not condom and condom and yes. not um, hormonal and hormonal. We do not recommend doubling up. Like I have some patients that are really anal and they'll take the birth control pill patch ring and emergency contraception. Oh, no. And that is too much hormone. It could put you at risk definitely for side effects and definitely um, eh, not so much for blood clots. And then the other thing to know as an aside, it's a very fine point, but we, we tell our patients and hopefully they listen, is if you're using Ella, which is the prescription only emergency contraception, if you mix that with any of the hormonal birth controls, um, Ella won't work. It won't inactivate the birth control method, but the birth control method will inactivate the Ella because mm. Ella blocks progesterone. And if you add progesterone, which all the hormonal methods have, then you are blocking the Ella's action. You're giving it too much progesterone to block. So we always tell people when you take Ella, wait five days before you throw on any hormonal method of birth control. You certainly could throw on the IUD. You certainly could throw on condoms and spermicide, but any hormonal method will inactivate the Ella, which is an emergency contraceptive. Hmm. I actually hadn't thought about that, but that makes a lot of sense <laughs> about the anti-progesterone and progesterone. Oh. Yeah. Uh-oh, did you freeze? Did I freeze? I think Edie's froze because I can see the timer going. Does anybody have any questions? I'm looking in the comments. We'll see if Edie's comes back because this is her last show and it would be awesome for her to say goodbye. But if not, we are thankful that um, Iris has been with us this entire summer and has been doing these lives in both Spanish and English. And she's a pre-med at MIT, so I wish her the best. And I know that she will crush it out there. Um, I hope that she will uh, apply to my alma mater, go UCSF, as well as where I currently work, um, Stanford, uh, as well as Pandia Health. Um, please check us out, pandiahealth.com. And if you want to skip the trip to the pharmacy, get your birth control delivered. If you have a prescription, just tell us where it's at. We move it to our pharmacy, bill your insurance, ship it to your door. No insurance, no problem. Most birth control pills are $15 a pack for a three pack minimum or $20 a pack because we got to cover shipping and handling and overhead if you're just getting one pack at a time. And then um, if you need a prescription, as Edis mentioned before, we can you can use our expert, passionate birth control doctors in California, Florida, Texas, Arizona, and Wyoming. For just $20 once a year, we give you access to our birth control expert doctors, and they can write you a prescription if it's safe. Um, and then we will mail it to you and either bill it to your insurance or bill it to uh, you. If you don't have insurance, uh, we take credit card and I think we might take debit card as well. Well, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Iris, for your work with us. And she's <laughs> back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry for my internet. I'm not sure what you have said if you would like to end the video. <laughs> I did say thank you so much and I did wish mm -hmm. you the best and I hope that you will apply to UCSF, which I think is oh. one of the best schools out there. And um, I did a plug on using Pandia Health Services, told them the states that we are in, but it looks like Pablo has a question. Um, oh, that's my friend Pablo. <laughs> Hi, Pablo. Do you want to take it? it? Oh yeah, how does plan B in an abortion pill affect the biology of a woman? So as I mentioned before, um, plan B and Plan B works by putting a high level of progesterone in the body. So it tells the body she's pregnant because progesterone pro gestation is um, telling your gestation being pregnant, tells your body that you're pregnant and your body's like, 
if I'm pregnant, I better not pop out another egg because then I'd have twins that were different ages. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Growing at the same time. So that's how plan B works. And so it shocks the body with a high dose of progesterone. And then anytime you throw down a whole bunch of progesterone and then it goes away, usually you get a period with that. And so that's how plan B works. With respect to Ella, Ella is an anti-progesterone. And so the main way we think it works is one, blocking the egg from coming out, and two, just kind of preventing the sperm from getting where it wants to be and just being anti-progesterone. The abortion pill is a totally um, different drug. And that one is also an anti-progesterone, but very, very strong. And because it kind of eats up all the progesterone, then the pregnancy can no longer continue. And it's actually usually a two drug regimen. And one is to suck up all the progesterone, preventing the embryo from continuing its growth. And then the other is to cause kind of cramps to kick stuff out. And so okay. when you're just a couple cells, you know, or up to, I believe you can do it up to 10 weeks by the medication pill, but that's a different talk altogether and not my specialty. Yeah. Uh, and do these have like long-term effects on people? So the question is, um, I've heard asked before, is how many times can you use Plan B? How many times can you use Ella? And you can use it as many times as you need. But as I mentioned, Plan B is jarring to the system, but less jarring than an unwanted pregnancy. And then Ella is maybe slightly jarring to the system, but again, less than a pregnancy. And if you use them all in a row, doesn't mean it's gonna work. It depends where the egg is. And if the egg has come out, then the likelihood of working is much less. If the egg has come out, the only one that consistently works is the copper IUD. So if myself or my daughter were sexually assaulted and we wanted a 0 0.0001 chance of being impregnated, and it was like three to five days out from this sexual assault, I would absolutely go in the ER or to my doctor's office and say, I want a copper IUD as emergency contraception. But um, take Plan B and Ella as many times as you need, but much better to use a more regular form that's going to work 99.9999% effective than 75 to 95 or zero if your egg is already popped out. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for answering our questions, Dr. Yen. Uh, sorry, guys, for all the interruptions. My intern has been out lately. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for asking questions, Pablo. And thank you, Pandia Health, for taking me on this summer. Um, I look forward to seeing all the content that you guys will be posting in the future. Thank uh, you so much for your work. And I'm excited to have you join the sisterhood, brotherhood of <laughs> physicians. And uh, I think you're going to crush it. Thank you. Hopefully I do get into UCSF. It, it is a great school. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.